good evening everybody good evening once again back to your channel biopoint stream the world of bio with a one shot session series from today for the next 7 days continuously for my dear ne 2021 and 2022 batch so today we are discussing with the chapter of human physiology digestion and absorption and today we are having a one shot lecture so today we are one second let me reduce the echo over here Yes, I hope now everything is fine and clear for each one of you over here. Am I right? Is it fine for everybody over here? My audio, the screen, everything is five hundred percentage clear. Is it? In between, I'll reduce my voice because I'm not. My throat is not good. I told you. Okay, so in between, I don't want to miss your class. So I hope everything is fine. then give me hearts on the screen everybody to begin this first session on the one shot so in between i don't want to miss your class yes thank you so much nila calvin shivani shraddha pratipa is there yes pratipa why missing all the exams nowadays something busy in the college yes yes so without wasting let's move on so watch till the end if you have any doubt clear this chapter now itself this is your final touch with this chapter clear everybody this is your final touch you are going to finalize the revision of this chapter this one hour the upcoming one hour okay i'll try to finish it as maximum good as i can If you have any doubt, you are free to ask over here. This should be your last chance, and you have you should finalize all the important points of this chapter in today's class itself. Okay. So after this particular series, you will have the Google Slides quiz. That is Google Forms quiz in our group. I will share the link of this chapter. Okay, Pratipa. Okay, everybody. So don't forget to hit the like button. Those who, six watching, five likes. Those who haven't liked the session, please don't forget to hit the like button. Do share it with your friends. Subscribe our YouTube channel of Bio Point Stream, the world of bio, and leave the comments about the one shot session. How have it benefited you or not on the comment section? This is our amazing Telegram group at Bio Point New, where we can take regular discussion, polls, updates on our classes, OMR examinations, and everything. guys polls aim at 100k series is that okay because in live we will usually miss it so i planned it like that every day we are posting tomorrow we are going to hit 200 questions okay we have completed 175 questions till today tomorrow we are going to hit 200 hope you have took a new notebook for writing all the important question where you are going wrong This is a crash course for NEE 2021, which is happening in our Telegram group. So do join our Telegram group to know more about the crash course for NEE 2021 as well as for NEE 2022. So this is our new series, one shot sessions for NEE 2021, 2022 batches. This is the link of direct link to our Telegram group, t.me slash biopoint new. So let's begin with this chapter. take down the important points no need to uh take out other the entire points over here i'll provide you with a pdf of the similar notes from biopoint in the telegram after the session gets over done so listen in the class take out your ncrt mark it for those who doesn't know this chapter who lacks clarity in this chapter take out your ncrt listen in the class very carefully can we start with your hearts on the screen we can start over with the session right now yes done everybody is it clear for everybody yes thank you so much so let's begin with digestion and absorption first we have to study what is the definition of digestion 
can you see this writings on the screen what i'm drawing on the screen with the yellow pen can you see it digestion is the process of breaking down of complex food particles into simpler forms to absorb them so we know that for getting the food absorbed okay if they are occurring as a large one the surface area will be not favoring the absorption of those kinds of particle so it's very important for a person's body to break down the complex food materials the nutrients the complex compounds present in our food should be broken down into simpler forms to absorb the nutrients and get utilized inside our body if we just go and eat a large what food like what we give to the elephant we give some kind of a mixed food like something to the elephant right if we go and eat such kind of a food will it digest as if no it won't be because it contains a large amount of compounds a large number of nutrients in it so they have to be broken down okay as the particles get smaller what happens is that the surface area increases guys please don't confuse it like this particle tell me guys this particle or this particle have larger surface area tell me whether a or b has the large surface area tell me on the chat box guys fast we don't have time these all are the simple points do you know just give a try everybody yes absolutely guys this particular particle have the large surface area okay the particle which is having a small size will be having a large surface area very good calvin and pratipa i hope others have got it so the food which we taken have to shraddha it's b okay it's b it's not a it's b which is having the large surface area clear okay nala is there any uh, buffering issue with you any network issue you are not speaking out anything okay so please try to be active so when the food is broken down into simpler particles so it will be easy for our body the enzymes the hormones everything will be easy for them to act upon so the digestion you know what is digestion it is a breaking down of complex food particles into simpler forms to absorb the nutrients we know that the digestive system of human comprises of an elementary canal and the associated glands okay the part of the elementary canal the elementary canal and various glands the associated glands it's clearly mentioned in your ncert elementary canal and digestive tract is different because digestive tract means elementary canal plus associated digestive glands elementary canal means the part of the digestive tract excluding the glands such as liver pancreas salivary glands all those things clear moving on to the first part of the elementary canal you know i hope you, uh, you have to uh, think about the diagram given in your ncert if it is ncert is with you then you can refer your ncert for the diagram so the first part of the elementary canal is the mouth guys is it okay are you all understanding are you all getting the point number 1 the slide number 1 is it clear for everybody i'm talking i'm uh, explaining each and everything very slowly because it should be a final revision okay so the first part is the mouth the first part is the mouth so teeth we know that the most important mcq question that comes from this chapter from this unit from this topic is what are the different properties of teeth especially human teeth okay so three main words are mentioned in your ncert which highlighted which has to be highlighted tecodont diphyodont and heterodont simply these words were given as the option for knee 2018 knee 2015 and all okay 
and in some cases they will give you the explanation the definition for the codon and will be asking you what does it refer to so you have to study what are the three different terms which describes a human teeth and what do each one of them stands for so the human teeth has mainly three different properties decodont attachment diphyodont and heterodont so let's move with what each one of them means clear what do you mean by decodont attachment decodont means open your mouth and let's see that the, your tooth are embedded in the jaw bone your teeth all the teeth are embedded in a socket in a jaw bone socket am i right give me thumbs up on the chat box if it is like that and you're clear with it thecodon means all the bones all the teeth are attached to the jaw bone cavity that is what is referred to as the word thecodon sometimes a question may come the human teeth have the property that it is attached or embedded in a jaw bone socket what is the word that is used in case of human being then you will be given different options like thecodon diphyodon heterodon and some other options also at that particular time you know you have heard about the sentence and you know that one of the three words thecodon diphyodon and heterodon is the answer but you will never remember it uh, in that three hours in that just three hours which is your life determining time clear so you have to be very careful just highlight in this point just bookmark just put a star mark in your ncert whenever you revise this chapter you have to start out from this particular thing so thecodon means the jaw uh, the teeth is embedded in a jaw bone socket second one is the diphyodon guys in your lower ages when you were in your kindergarten and all what happens is that your mouth was filled with one set of teeth but now is the same teeth which was there in your kindergarten now also in your mouth no it's all have been replaced by permanent teeth now what is the teeth in our mouth is what is the permanent teeth which is 32 in number okay so that is what is referred to as the diphyodon that means that two set of teeth milk teeth is there or deciduous teeth is there okay two kinds of teeth is there the deciduous teeth or the milk teeth the deciduous teeth or the milk teeth which is 20 in number in case of small kids the small infants in your pre kg going children but they are uh, replaced as you grow up they are replaced by the permanent adult teeth which is actually 32 in number previous year mcq question how many teeth are there for the infants 20 teeth clear is it clear for everybody guys tell me something on the chat box everybody are you clear with the two terms thecodon the teeth is embedded in the jaw bone socket and the diphyodon means there are two different set of teeth during the entire lifetime of a human being that is initially deciduous or the milk teeth which is 20 in number which is actually replaced by a permanent adult teeth which is 32 in number the third term is the heterodont heterodont means that hetero means what different heterodont means there are different kinds of teeth just go in front of a mirror and you will see that all the different kinds some uh, two or three teeth look like in both the jaws and all other teeth or each teeth differ in their shape differ in their size and everything right so that is what is referred to as a heterodont so in case of a human being we have four different types of teeth let me erase all the marking draw it once again so heterodont means there are actually four different type of teeth in case of human being that is talking about the adult people incisors eight in number and what is the function of incisors they are for biting right then canines which are four in number which is for tearing whenever you just uh, take out a leg piece of a chicken or a, a mutton or something what you will do you will you will what you will tear it with your canines you are not holding the chicken leg or the piece in front of your mouth and just piercing it but you are holding it by your side and then only you are piercing it am i right am i right 
is that the way oh you are holding the teeth like uh, how you hold a mic and then you will pierce the chicken piece or will you hold it by your side and then you will tear it side or friend how you are going to tear when you are given with a chicken or a meat type of substance definitely you will hold it from your sides only because in sides you will have the one canine in the upper jaw one canine in the lower jaw in the right side one canine in the upper jaw one canine in the lower jaw in the left side also right that is what canines are four in number next you have the premolars which are eight in number what is the function of premolars crushing and grinding next last you have the molars that is molars are 12 in number which are used for making small pieces hope it's clear premolars 8 in number for crushing and grinding molars 12 in number making smaller pieces guys no need to guys no need to buy hard no need to buy hard the uh, number just study the dental formula from which you can easily calculate sometimes a numerical question can come from this chapter yes look guys if the dental formula is given by 2123 divided by 2123 dental formula is actually representing the upper and the lower half of the jaw okay upper half right side lower half like uh, right side okay don't confuse it like totally two incisors are there in the right side two incisors are there in the lower jaw no just we are talking about only upper and lower half of only one jaw either upper jaw or the lower jaw clear clear everybody so 2123 divided by 2123 means this is one side only i'll tell you i'll tell you okay animals we don't have to study because in rabbit and all there is certain gap between the incisors and the premolars okay that you will uh, call it as the chiasmata not chiasmata diastema chiasmata where you have studied where you have studied chiasmata in case of cell division okay these two words always confuses me okay diastema you might have learned in your lower classes icsc students might have learned in their 6th and 8th standards when they have learned about the digestive system in case of rabbit you know that a rabbit is a grass eating a herbivore right it will it is there is no need for a canine over there because there is no food they are eating to tear it out they will only bite the food and eats so in case of them the canines are absent so in between the incisors and the premolars there is a large gap and that large gap you will call it as a diastema sometimes in your mcq questions in one of the options they may ask you like diastema okay so don't misconfuse or confuse it with the chiasmata which is the chiasmata is actually what chiasmata is the x shaped structure formed during the zygotine not zygotine diplotene stage of meiosis chiasmata okay and we are telling about the adult just calculate 2 plus 1 3 plus 2 5 plus 3 8 so in the upper half one jaw you will have the 8 and the lower also 8 so 8 into 2 16 is there in upper jaw 16 is there in the lower jaw so total it makes a total of 32 teeth and in case of kids that is infants very important sometimes please read the question very carefully before you answer whether they are asking you the dental formula of adult or the kids the kids the dental formula is 2102 divided by 2102 the premolars will be absent so just count out 2 plus 1 3 plus 2 5 and in the lower jaw also 5 so 5 into 2 10 in one jaw plus 10 in the another jaw so together it is 20 in number we have to, uh, studied over their kids it is 20 in number and for the adult they are 32 have you got how to calculate the number of teeth sometimes they can 
ask you in the question paper in the exam they can give you the dental formula guys no other dental formula of any other will not be asked okay of any other animals or birds or whatever it won't not birds animals will not be asked okay but sometimes you can see a question related to the dental formula of animal they will give you the dental formula and will ask you to calculate the number of teeth present in that particular organism so at that particular time just calculate count add up all the things multiply by 2 and add everything clear guys can i give you a question are you ready to do that are you ready to do a particular question to make it clear about calculating of the dental formula yes tell me the answer fast we don't have so much of time to waste over here i'm just framing the question it's not something which is real or original just take it the dental formula the dental formula of an organism of an organism x is 2022 divided by 2022 calculate the total number of teeth calculate the total number of teeth the total number of teeth in the upper jaw tell me the answer i'll give you just 30 seconds to answer this question and your time starts now tell me the answer fast absolutely very good nila very good Shraddha. It is 12. In the upper jaw it is 12. In the lower jaw it is again 12. So total teeth if they are asking the answer is 24. So specifically answer the question. Listen to the question very carefully. Have mentioned it upper jaw and you all have given me the correct answer. Very good. I hope you are clear with the concept. Some Sometimes they can ask you a question. What is, guys, then uh, rearrange the question and write it like this. Once again, rearrange the question. The same thing, calculate the total number of, calculate the total number of incisors in the organism. Total number of incisors in the organism, tell me. Just tell the answer fast. Total number of incisors in the organism. In the organism X. Nela is it 4? Calvin is it 4? How 4? How 4? Look. This is the incisors. 2 by 2 is the incisors. I told you. 2 by 2 means it is one particular half. So in the upper jaw you will have one more 2 will be there. And in the lower halves another 2 more will be there. So 4 plus 4 the answer is 8. Clear? 8 is there. Yes, 2 in half of the upper jaw. 2 in half of the lower jaw. Don't miss the word half. Okay? This is what? Calvin, half. I already explained you. Half of the upper jaw, half of the lower jaw. Okay. Have you understood the topic now? Calvin, is it clear? Dental formula always refer to half the amount, number of teeth in one particular side. Okay. Understood. Hope it's clear. When you do a question, you will be more clear with it. So, the taste buds are present on the upper surface of the tongue in the papillae. So, papillae is a particular structure present on the tongue. And in the papillae, you will have the taste buds where you are 
tasting all the different kinds of food. No need to study where you are tasting bitter, sour or whatever. Okay. No need to study all those things. The tongue is attached to the floral cavity by frenulum. Very, very important MCQ question. Very important, guys. Very, very important. Please don't miss it. Okay. Frenulum is the attachment to the oral cavity. Next one. So from the mouth, the foot is going to enter the pharynx. So pharynx acts as a passage, common passage of food and air. Very important MCQ question for AIMS. Name the common passage of food and air. It is pharynx. In the pharynx, you will have an epiglottis. In the pharynx, you will have the epiglottis. Actually, epiglottis is a cartilaginous flap. Some time a question can come what is epiglottis it is a cartilaginous flap you can they can ask what epiglottis is a modification of then the correct answer is cartilage in the option they will be giving you areola tissue bone cartilage adipose tissue all these things so the correct answer over there is a cartilage it blocks the entry of food into the glottis the opening of the trachea trachea is also known as the windpipe clear Next part, is it clear? And in the pharynx, you will have the rhythmic movement to push down the foot and that particular rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the pharynx, the elementary canal, you will call it as the peristalsis. You will call it as the peristalsis. Next one is the esophagus. Next one is the esophagus. Esophagus is a long tube. Okay. Esophagus is a long tube that opens into the stomach, which is actually regulated by a gastroesophageal sphincter. Very, very important. Guys, gastro means something which is related to stomach. Esophageal means definitely you will understand it is esophagus. Right? I'll take yellow color itself, otherwise it won't be clear for you. Yes. So gastro means stomach, esophageal means esophagus. So a sphincter muscles regulated. Very important MCQ, match the following type of question can come from it. Clear, match the following kind of questions can come. Can you all hear me properly? Is the sound enough? Is the sound enough? I'm not talking at the loudest voice that I'm regularly using. Okay, I'm taking out the mic to my side and I'm talking. Regularly what I do is I keep the mic so many distance apart and I'll raise my voice. Okay, thank you so much. If at any time you wanted me to increase the voice, please inform me. I'll definitely increase it. Okay, next part is the stomach. Okay, stomach is divided into four main parts. Stomach is divided into four main parts. That is cardiac region, fontic region, body region, and the pyloric region. Okay. Cardiac, fontic, body, and pyloric. If this kind of a question comes for your exam, stomach is divided into dash parts. Option one, two, three, four. Then definitely you have to write the answer as what? What is there in your NCRT? Okay, you have to go with the same sentence as there in the NCRT. I think in the NCRT, yes, in the NCRT, they have mentioned that stomach is mainly divided into three main parts. So if this kind, this kind of a question will never come for the exam, but in case, last time also we didn't expect it, such a kind of a simple question, but question was simple. So this time expecting a more simpler question than that. So this is the right time where you can crack out the exam with less effort itself. Okay. Now the syllabus will be reduced. So this is the right time where God is with you. So if you showed your 500 percentage from your side, definitely you will crack. No doubt for that. So. If such kind of a question may come for your exam, then the correct answer should be 3 because in your NCRT body is not differentiated as a separate part. Cardiac portion. 
I don't know whether my drawing of the stomach will be clear. Yes, this time it went well. Yes. So guys, the esophagus opens. The esophagus opens into this particular portion. You will call it as the cardiac region. So cardiac region is the region where you will have the opening of the esophagus. The domed shaped portion of the stomach, the domed shaped portion of the stomach, you will call it as the fundus. Okay. The domed shaped portion, you will call it as the fundus. This is actually the body. And the last region, the last part of the stomach, which is called the pyloric region, which is opening into the C-shaped structure called the duodenum. So the stomach is opening, the pyloric region is opening into the duodenum. So these are the three main parts of the stomach. Clear? Let's move with the small intestine. Small intestine mainly consists of three main parts. It is the longest part of the elementary canal, even though its term suggests its name demands that it is the smallest, small intestine. But it is much feet longer than the large intestine. Okay, very long, longest part of the entire elementary canal, small intestine. So, I already told you that from the stomach, the C-shaped portion, the last portion of the stomach is connected with the uh, first portion of the small intestine, that is the duodenum. So, there you will have the pyloric sphincter muscles. Okay, pyloric sphincter muscle. Why? Because pyloric, pylorus is the last part of the uh, stomach. So, from the pylorus connecting with the small intestine, what happens is that there you will have the connection of the pyloric sphincter muscles. In this small intestine, you will have three main parts, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. Guys, study in this particular order itself. Study in this order itself because sometimes for making the question simple, they can ask you to arrange the following in the correct order of the elementary canal or how the food digestion is being happening. Next is the large intestine. We haven't yet reached the portion which is very important. So large intestine has again three parts. That is a cecum, colon and rectum. Cecum, colon and rectum. Very important MCQ. Repeated MCQ from cecum part. The sentence of cecum. It is a blind sac. It is a blind sac which host microbes. So, which hosts some symbiotic microbes. It's not normal microbes. It's symbiotic microbes as mentioned in your NCRT. Are you all seeing the points? Have you all noted down the points of cecum? We are discussing the third page of your NCRT. We are discussing the third page. I have not included the diagrams over there in the slides because I wanted you guys to refer your NCRT along with me. Clear? So very important question, guys. I can give you guarantee this question will definitely come for your exam. Either for NEET 2021 or for NEET 2022. They will ask, name the structure, name the blind sac which hosts the symbiotic microorganism. Then the answer is cecum. And inside, in the cecum itself, you will have, in the large intestine, if it is like this, okay, if the large intestine is like this, by this particular side, you will have just a small vermiform appendix okay vermiform appendix is there clear and that is said to be a vestigial organ what do you mean by a vestigial organ it was functional in the early human beings that is it was functional during uh, the australopithecus the ramapithecus all those things you have studied in the evolution especially class 12 students you might have studied about all those things in the class 12th in your 10th standard also evolution, heredity and evolution, vestigial organ. So they were of use once, but now they are not providing any kind of use. There are many stru uh, such structures inside our body, in the body also. Now also in the body, we have different, different structures. Different structures are there which act as a vestigial organ. For example, the tail, which once which once served a function, but now it has no function. The body hair, 
it the function is limited right now right then the teeth the wisdom teeth appendix all those things are vestigial organ which has now no specific function inside our body the colon consists of four main parts that is ascending part this transverse part sigmoid and descending okay so ascending transverse sigmoid and descending i think according to your ncrt only three let me check out the ncrt i have also taken out my ncrt yes according to your ncrt colon is divided only into three different structures ascending transverse and descending i'll draw for you i don't know whether it would be in a nice manner okay this is enough right now yes this is the ascending increasing right ascending limb of the colon this is the transverse and this is the descending okay ascending transverse and descending the final part you will have the rectum it opens out of the body through the anus sphincter muscles okay else it might be a new ncrt so if in the new ncrt if it is 4 definitely you can also write it as the 4 my ncrt is 2006 edition my ncrt is 2006 so i am also making you study colon consists of four parts guys i am making the slides as per my ncrt my notebooks and everything so if you find any mistakes in the slide as per your new ncrt please try to inform me sir in the slides it was four but according to our ncrt it is five or whatever any mistake you can inform okay in my ncrt is 2006 previous edition and in that the colon the sentence is the colon is divided into three parts ascending transverse and descending that is a sentence in my ncrt so study it as four ascending transverse sigmoid and descending can we move with the one of the important topic i'll show you what all things are there for us to we have we have reached 10 we have 10 more slides to complete okay 10 more slides to complete can we move with the histology of the human elementary canal can we move with the histology of the elementary canal very important very very important okay 100 percentage guaranteed mcqs 100 percentage guaranteed mcqs okay let me have a bit of water thank you so much yes <clears throat> histology of the human elementary canal from esophagus to rectum there are four layers present in the wall of the elementary canal you have to study it either from outside to inside let's study it from outside to inside itself the outside layer is the serosa then you have the muscularis then you have the submucosa and in the last you will have the mucosa the innermost layer is the mucosa take out your ncrt page number 260 diagram 16.4 diagrammatic representation of the transverse section of gut okay very important frequently they are asking you the diagram based question instead of statement questions okay so serosa is the outermost layer just by heart the serosa is the outermost layer and it is made up of mesothelium and connective tissue three question can be asked serosa is the outermost layer it is composed of mesothelium and connective tissue then you have the muscularis which is made up of smooth muscles the muscularis is made up of smooth muscles and this muscularis is divided into outer longitudinal and inner circular very important please don't forget outer longitudinal inner circular just have some codes to remember which layer is outside which layer is inside so what is the order serosa outer longitudinal muscularis 
inner circular muscularis. Clear? So serosa, outer longitudinal muscularis, inner circular muscularis. Then the third layer and the serosa is made up of mesothelium and connective tissue. Muscularis is made up of smooth muscles. Then you have the submucosa layer which is made up of loose connective tissue. The submucosa layer is made up of loose connective tissue and it is highly vascularized. That is, it contains limbs, blood and nerves. It contains glands in the duodenum part. So they can ask you a particular question. Brunner's gland in duodenum is present in which layer of the elementary canal? Everybody on the chat box. Brunner's gland of the small intestine is present in which layer of the elementary canal? Serosa, muscularis, submucosa, mucosa. Which layer? Unitedly, tell me fast on the chat box, guys. Without wasting the times, tell me. Nobody is responding. Why there is so much of delay in answering the question? Absolutely, Shraddha. It is submucosa. Okay. Submucosa layer, you will have the branchial gland, all the glands of the elementary canal. The last layer is the mucosa. Mucosa is the innermost layer and it contains irregular folds. Irregular folds and gastric glands in the stomach area. Brunner's gland is associated with the duodenum. That is why they are present in the submucosa. But the irregular folds, the villi, crypts of labor cone, the gastric glands, everything is present in the mucosa layer. Don't get confused. The glands in the duodenum present in the submucosa layer and the glands in the stomach, that is the gastric glands and the irregular folds like villi, crypts of labor cun, all those things are present in the mucosa layer of the stomach, not stomach, elementary canal. In the crypts of labor cun, you will have the villi, the microvilli and the crypts of labor cun are present in the small intestine, which greatly increases the surface area figure 16.5. A section of small intestinal mucosa showing the villi. The villi, the microvilli, the crypts of labor kun are all structures associated with the mucosa layer. Okay. The mucus is secreted by the goblet cells of the mucosal epithelium. Neat 2020 question related to goblet cells. Neat 2020 phase 1 which helps in the lubrication. Guys, have, you, have anybody noted... We have complete, uh, I have been uh, doing, we have done nearly 25 to 30 questions of NEET 2020 paper, NEET 2019 paper, NEET 2018 paper, then NEET 2016 phase 2 paper, NTA Abhyas paper, all these things in this 175 question we have total completed. I have been putting the question, the polls related or uh, from all these things. NEET 2020 questions also have included. That's why I'm telling you, please note it down at the day before your exam. No need to go through the entire MCQ's textbooks. Just refer those, that simple notebook which you are going, which you are uh, writing it. Okay. So let's move on. Next, we are moving on to the associated glands. That is the first one, salivary glands. Okay. The first one is the salivary glands. The saliva is secreted into the buccal cavity by three pairs of glands. Okay, according now also according to our NCRT, it's three, but recently four, fourth one has been found out. The salivary gland, fourth salivary glands also found. But we have to study only three. There are three pairs of salivary glands. Parotid gland present in the cheek, submaxillary or submantibular gland present in the lower jaw sublingual below the tongue clear very important their location also parotid salivary glands in the cheek submaxillary otherwise known as submantibular gland in the lower jaw sublingual gland below the tongue sublingual below the tongue clear very very important everybody then you will have there is a duct from the parotid gland. 
the duct from the parotid gland that contains or that transfers the saliva secreted by the parotid gland you will call it as the stenson's duct what do you will call it as stenson's duct okay so the duct from the salivary gland parotid gland present in the cheek you will call it as the stenson's duct okay then you will have submaxillary or submandibular gland so the duct from the submaxillary or submandibular gland you will have you call it as what the wharton's duct you will call it as the wharton's duct the other one is also there but there is no need to study wharton's duct i have seen in certain question paper of aipmt stenson's duct you have seen in certain question papers of phu jitmar and all that's why i told you other one also i'll tell you sublingual gland below the tongue you will have the bartholin's duct or the uh, rivenous duct okay bartholin's bartholin's duct which is the duct that carrying the secretion from the sublingual part clear next you have the liver this is a salivary gland is a frequently asked mcq question okay please john skip those portion liver is the largest gland of our body that weighs approximately 1.5 to 2 kg that is the weight of a newborn baby the largest gland being 1.5 to 2 kg present below the diaphragm there are two lobes present in the liver okay the liver has two lobe the there are two lobes for the liver the hepatic cells the la, right lobe and the left lobe the hepatic cells secrete bile juice okay which kind of cells the hepatic cells hepatic is a word related with the liver so the hepatic cells present in the liver secretes the bile juice which is actually stored in a structure called the gall bladder okay the hepatic cells secrete bile juice that's the liver produces bile juice it contains different components such as bilirubin biliverdin that gives color to the plasma of the blood the urine and everything clear which is stored in the gall bladder the hepatic lobules contain the hepatic cells and are the structural what are the structural and functional units of the liver they are the hepatic lobules the hepatic lobules are the structural once again the hepatic lobules are the structural and functional unit of the liver very important mcq the hepatic lobules is covered by the covering of the liver that is called the glissens capsule it is again a sheet of connective tissue it is again a sheet of connective tissue is a glissens capsule that covers the hepatic lobules okay next very important diagram 16.6 of your ncrt the duct system of liver gall bladder and pancreas the bile duct is formed from the cystic duct what do you mean by cystic duct the duct from the gall bladder so the duct of the gall bladder you will call it as what the cystic duct so the bile duct is formed from the cystic duct that is actually coming from the gall bladder and what do you mean by hepatic duct hepatic duct is a duct from the liver very important from where is the duct originating cystic duct is a duct from the gall bladder hepatic duct is a duct from the liver then so in the cystic duct and the hepatic duct you will have the secretions of the liver that is a bile juice containing bile salts bilirubin bilirubin everything then you have the pancreas the leaf the clove shape the leaf like structure present in the in between the c shaped structure if this is a stomach and this is a duodenum okay c shaped structure is a duodenum in this particular thing you will have a leaf like structure like this that is actually a mixocrine gland it is it performs the exocrine function that is secrete certain enzymes pancreatic juice which is actually alkaline in nature pancreatic juice is actually alkaline in nature very important mcq it is a mixotrophic gland so it is endocrine also hormones are produced insulin and glucagon i have already taught you in the chapter of what chemical coordination and integration that they are antagonistic in function the last 
duct or thing that you will have over here. It is a sphincter of Audi. Very, very important. Very important. Highlight star mark or whatever. Draw with different colors of pen. Sphincter of Audi. Very important question for your exam. Sphincter of Audi is actually the sphincter muscle which is present in the opening of the hepatopancreatic duct. Hepatopancreatic duct means what? It is constituting the bile duct and the pancreatic duct, which is actually opening into the duodenum. So the bile duct, then the pancreatic duct together forms the hepatopancreatic duct and which is guarded. It's opening to the duodenum is guarded by the sphincter of Audi. Give me hearts on the screen if everybody is understanding the topics clearly well. I have been going very slowly to make you understand each of the topics very clearly. Okay, is it clear for everybody? Is it clear? Yes, Pratipa, is it clear? Calvin, is it clear? Yes, thank you so much, guys. Let's move on with the digestion of food. Let's start with the topic of digestion. The digestion of food starts from the mouth itself. Okay. Each nutrient has different, different locations. Okay. So, digestion of food starts from the mouth itself. The masticated food that mixed with the saliva makes a small mass of food. So, the food, the type, that is the food that is mixed with our saliva forms a ball-like structure. That ball-like structure, you will call it as the bolus. Okay. The ball-like structure, the small mass of food, which is formed by the mastication of the food, with the saliva inside the mouth or the buccal cavity, you will call it as the bolus. The bolus then moves to the pharynx and esophagus by the process of deglutition. Okay, what do you mean by deglutition? Swallowing. The another term, the biological term for swallowing is deglutition. There are various enzymes that get mixed with the food at different parts of the elementary canal and facilitate the process of digestion. Okay, guys, can we move on? I have made out a table. I will share, I'll share the notes also for you. Definitely, it will be really helpful. Those who have a printer or those who are able to take out the printout of those notes uh, can take it and store it in a file because you can revise it. Direct statement from the slides marks the notes. Clear? Can we move? Let's move with the first one. That is, this is the order, serial number, part of the elementary canal. I'm since we are doing a crash course like one shot revision, I'm not going to explain each and every point in a paragraph as how it is mentioned in your NCRT. Just take us screenshots or refer the notes that I'm giving you. I have already included the table also in the notes also. Just exactly like this, which will make you clear with it. Okay. So we have to study it like this only where and how the enzymes are acting on which kind of foods. So... Inside the mouth, let's start with the mouth. In the mouth, you will have the secretion present in the mouth is the salivary gland. The only one secretion present in the, the gland present inside the mouth is the salivary gland and that secretes saliva. What are the enzymes present in saliva? You will have the lysosome. You will have the amylase. Can you see the writings on the screen? Mouth is the part of the elementary canal. The secretion, the gland is the salivary gland. The secretion saliva contains lysozyme and amylase. What is the function of the enzyme lysozyme? It is an antimicrobial substance. It is an antimicrobial substance. The same substance is present in the tear also. Lysozyme. Clear? The same substance present in the tear also. Lysozyme. And inside the crypts of Leberkun, inside the crypts of Leberkun, we have already studied about the Crips of Leberkun. Okay. Inside the Crips of Leberkun, you have a particular kind of a cells, which is actually referred to as the Panet cells. This Panet cells also secretes the antibacterial enzymes called the lysozyme. Okay. Next, you have the amylase enzyme also present in the saliva. It helps in the hydrolysis of carbohydrate. It is slightly acidic. That is, its pH is 6.8, approaching to be the neutral one. 
we cannot say it is to be alkaline we cannot say it is to be most acidic slightly acidic in nature and what is its function it converts starch into maltose guys is this simple is this easy for you to revise or should i include it as a paragraph for you to remember i think you guys will be it will be easy for you guys to remember this particular thing it's as a table inside the mouth lysosome amylase is there lysosome is an antimicrobial enzyme or an antibacterial enzyme it uh, amylase is helps in the hydrolysis of carbohydrates at a ph of 6.8 it converts starch into maltose very important guys each word is important next is the stomach next is the stomach stomach you will have three different kinds of cells that is a mucus next cells the peptic cells or the chief cells then you will have the oxygenetic cells or the parietal cells okay the mucus next cells parietal cells or the oxygenetic cells and the peptic cells or the chief cells first is the mucus next cell mucus next cell secrete mucus it helps in the lubrication and protection of the stomach by the action of hcl it helps in the protection and lubrication of the walls of the stomach by the hcl then peptic cells or the chief cells three terms the three names of the three cells are very important oxygenetic cells or parietal cells peptic cells or chief cells mucus next cells next peptic cells or the chief cells secrete an enzyme which is pepsinogen which is a pro enzyme already told you pepsinogen trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen for all those things trypsinogen pro carboxypeptidase for those ending with nogen and beginning with pro they are inactive enzymes so the hcl produced by the oxygenetic cells what is the function of oxygenetic cells or the parietal cell they secrete hcl and intrinsic factor okay intrinsic factor the hcl will act on the pepsinogen to convert it into active pepsin and in case of infants you would have the release of a particular enzyme called renin which helps in digesting the milk protein look at the ph of the stomach greater than the ph of sulfuric acid more okay more acidic in nature so the pepsinogen is actually a proteolytic enzyme that uh, what breaks down the proteins so what is the function the protein is broken down into proteases and peptones by the action of pepsin how is pepsinogen converted into pepsin by the action of hcl okay everybody is it clear for everybody yes the last one oxygenetic cells or the parietal cells secrete hcl and castles intrinsic factor okay so the hcl makes the ph acidic for the action of pepsin what is the function of hcl it acts on the pepsinogen to convert it into pepsin and what is the function of intrinsic factor it helps in the absorption of vitamin b12 okay so intrinsic factor is required for the absorption of vitamin b12 okay clear with it next is duodenum the enzyme secreted by duodenum of small intestine duodenum of the small intestine first one in the duodenum you will okay so in the duodenum you will have the pancreatic juice and the bile juice also acting in the duodenum only their action takes place that is pancreatic juice in the pancreatic juice you will have the mucus with bicarbonates that maintains the ph and protects the intestinal mucosa from hcl then you will have the trypsinogen which is inactive is converted into trypsin by a particular enzyme which is called enterokinase
okay so the trypsinogen is converted into trypsin by the action of enzyme called enterokinase and the proteins and this particular enzyme chymotrypsinogen procarboxypeptidase these three enzymes helps in the conversion of proteins peptones and proteases are converted into dipeptides guys please tell me is it clear or not the next enzyme pancreatic amylase pancreatic lipase pancreatic nucleases pancreatic amylase converts polysaccharides into disaccharides lipases converts fat into di and monoglycerides nucleases converts nucleic acid into nucleotides and nucleosides okay so pancreatic juice mucus with bicarbonates trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen procarboxypeptidase amylase lipase and nucleases and their functions are also given in the table next you have the bile bile is actually produced by the liver it contains bile pigments bile salt cholesterol phospholipids and the bile is particular secretion produced by the liver but it contains no enzymes okay bile contains no enzymes it helps in the emulsification of fat to convert it into micelle and activates the lipase helps in the digestion of fat by breaking down of fat by the process of emulsification the very important mcq question that you can expect is the succus intericus it is actually the intestinal juice they will ask you a question which of the following is not a part or which of the following is not present in succus intericus in succus intericus you will have disaccharides dipeptides lipases and nucleosidases so disaccharides or maltase converts maltose into glucose dipeptides converts so uh, yes dipeptidases converts dipeptides into amino acid lipases converts di and monoglycerides to fatty acids and glycerol nucleosidases uh, converts nucleotides to nucleosides to sugar plus bases clear Okay, everyone. Yes, thank you so much. The moving on to the last topic that is absorption. Yes, moving on to the last topic. Okay, one second, guys. Clear. Moving on with the topic of absorption. The biomacromolecules are broken down in the duodenum part of the intestine and get absorbed in the jejunum and ileum part of the large intestine. Okay, the undigested food moves into the large intestine where some water and minerals get absorbed. The absorption of food occurs by a process called diffusion due to concentration gradient or by facilitated transport with the help of a carrier protein. We have to study this water. Water is transported by the osmosis. Water is os uh, transported by the osmosis. Then, you have the amino acids, glucose, monosaccharides, sodium. They are all absorbed by active transport. They are all transported by the active transport. Okay. 
amino acids glucose monosaccharides and sodium are absorbed in the blood by the active transport then you have the micelle form the chylomicron that is what do you mean by chylomicron they are the protein coated fat globules protein coated fat globules okay which are transported into the lacteals or limb vessels in the villi and they are released okay guys are you clear is it clear clear with the topic yes next some amount of absorption takes place in different parts and maximum absorption takes place in the small intestine and then some drugs are absorbed in the mouth inside the stomach you will have the absorption of water okay simple sugars alcohol absorption and all takes place inside the stomach itself small intestine small intestine maximum absorption takes place large intestine you will have the water some minerals and everything and by assimilation the absorbed nutrient reaches the different parts of the body through the blood stream and lymph for utilization calvin is it clear what happens a sad emoji tell me is the topics clear we are moving to the end of the chapter we have exceeded the time limit also okay if you have any doubt just clarify it last topic is the disorders of the digestive system many bacterial protozoan parasitic and viral infection causes inflammation of the intestine some of the common disorders are jaundice vomiting diarrhea constipation indigestion from indigestion and all repeated mcq question come for neat exam then the disease due to malnutrition the disease due to malnutrition are very common the diseases due to malnutrition are very common in developing and under developing countries first one is a protein energy malnutrition that is marasmus and quashiokar all other things are there in your ncert so i hope you can read it clear so what do you mean by marasmus what do you mean by kashiokar marasmus means it is due to the deficiency of proteins and calorie intake this condition is characterized by the thinning of the limbs extreme conditions of dryness wrinkled skin and a mental impairment so marasmus is caused due to the deficiency of proteins and questioker is also due to the deficiency of
proteins clear with the topics everybody so that's all about today's amazing session on the series number 1 of this particular one shot revision series give me hearts on the screen and we are going to end this join a telegram group come back to the telegram group right now you have the test paper in the telegram okay 34 questions are there 34 questions from this chapter has been there okay so just take down the test i uh, you don't want to show me your scores if you go wrong with anything just practice it one more time okay calvin i'll share it in the group okay the images of kwashiorkor and marasmus definitely i'll tell uh, share it okay guys thank you for your patient listening so tomorrow we'll come out with yet another chapter of human physiology bye bye guys have a good sleep but before that write down the exam clear bye bye